hair, we have a sample number one who graciously donated the hair. And sample number two who also graciously donated the hair. <laughs> so let's see what we can do with it. So, welcome to this uh, explanation of small angle x ray scattering. For our little demonstration that we've prepared here, uh, we're not using x-rays, but we're using something very similar. In this case, uh, light, uh, light from lasers. So we're going to do small angle laser scattering, which is effectively the same as small angle x-ray scattering. So what we've done to prepare this experiment is to take a source of light, which is also collimated. So we have here two laser pointers. One of them is red and the other one is green. And for our experiment, we've also uh, uh, asked two volunteers to donate some hairs. So we have two beautiful ladies donate us two hairs. You probably won't be able to see them here, but there are two hairs on, the, on them. Did it with a focus, without a focus like yep. hell. Oh. Holy. Right, so what we're going to do for our experiment is to take these hairs and we're going to hold them in front of the laser. First one laser and then the other laser, just like this. Now, if you follow me to the far end, we'll see what these hairs actually do to our laser beam. So here we have a perfectly clean whiteboard and on this we can shine the lasers. So here, here we have the red laser. And as the direct beam is pretty bright, let's fabricate a beam slope from the cap of a pen. There we go. And then we can introduce the hairs into the beam. So our first donor is named Kirsten. And her hair produces this oscillatory pattern. So we have oscillation maxima over here, over here, over here, and over here. Now our second subject is named Sophie and her hair has a much different oscillatory uh, period. So one maximum over here, one maximum over here, one over here, and one over here. Now if we switch to a different color laser, we can get an idea about the effect of the wavelength uh, on these patterns. Can we switch off the red one? So, we also have a green laser, which shines over here. And this is also very bright, but not as bright as a red one, so I can just use a black marker. To make a beam stop, to draw a beam stop on the board. So you see, light scattering is a lot easier than X ray scattering. Impractical effect. For us. Right, so there we have our beam stop. So now, if we introduce Kirsten's hair into the beam, we get this pattern with a maximum over here, maximum over here, maximum over here, here, and here. You can see, since we can see the green so well, we can go, we can see quite a few of these maxima. If we now switch to Sophie's hair, we see oscillation maxima here, 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 here. So let's try to analyze those patterns. So. In order to measure the angle at which this scatters, we need to measure the distances between these oscillations. So let's find out what they are. So this is the green laser, green. This is the red laser. So let's start measuring. For the green laser, we have two samples. One from Kirsten, one from Sophie. F I E. Now, 
Kirsten's hair oscillates with about 10.5 centimeters, but as you can see, it's over six oscillations. So we can do 10.5 centimeters divided by six oscillations is 1.75 centimeters per oscillation. So that makes 3.13. So from these figures, we see that when we measure with a green laser, that the period becomes smaller. So let's measure the distance between the sample and our whiteboard. And that's a total of 3 meters. So that is one of the lengths that we need. Join us again for part two where we calculate the diameter of these hairs.